Hi everybody, this is Scott Saad. I hope that you're having a good day. Today I wanted to spend a few minutes uh, discussing some parental tips to any of you who may be thinking what are some ways by which we can foster our children's intellect, uh, foster a good relationship with them, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I want to discuss three separate uh, stories, all of which coincidentally happened uh, on two separate trips to Florida. Uh, so let me begin with the first one. You know, as someone who's in the public eye, I receive all sorts of lovely messages from, you know, colleagues, from uh, random fans, from all sorts of people. And every single one that I read you know, brings me great uh, happiness and fills me with gratitude that my work is being appreciated by many people. But I say this, and I, I know some people might think it's a cliche, but it isn't. There's nothing more uh, enriching than to receive the uh, the love and support and gratitude of your own children. Uh, I'm talking here regarding my work. And so the first story comes from uh, a talk that I had given last year in Florida, in Naples, Florida. I had been invited by Hillsdale College to speak about the parasitic mind. And uh, Hillsdale were just unbelievably generous and gracious. They, they, they put us up in two beautiful villas. They flew my entire family, my children and my wife. Uh, it's just incredible. And uh, uh, when I gave the talk, uh, my, my whole family was there in the front row. And so they actually all got to see me in action. It was a you know, pretty you know, very large audience uh, with a lot of uh, you know, uh, influential people, including the president of Hillsdale. And they all you know, were, came up to me and were delighted by the talk and so on. I, th I don't know. I don't think that they've posted it on their YouTube channel, they meaning Hillsdale, but I think you can still find my entire a lecture on uh, their Facebook page. Uh, so in any case, uh, the reason I'm telling you the story is because I would once in a while kind of look at my family uh, as I was delivering the talk, and I was particularly on that day, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you speak to a crowd and they're, they're, they're somehow you don't, you're not... Uh, you're not tangoing properly, but here every every joke, every moment of levity, every serious moment, you know, the, the, the audience was fully tuned in. And I would look at my children and wife and see how they're looking at me. And that was, you know, more valuable and gave me greater pride than than anything I could have received from the, the most influential people in the world. And then at the end of the talk, uh, when, you know, I, I went down from the podium and, you know, after people had come up and, you know, said, all, you know, said hello and said all kinds of nice things and selfies and so on, my daughter looked at me and kind of gave me a hug and she said, hey, I'm so proud of you, daddy. And just that one sentence was worth all the weight of gold in the world, uh, so when you have your own children, in this case, their young children, uh, being proud of you, then you're you're doing hopefully something uh, well. So act in life to make those closest to you proud of you. Uh, so that's tip one. So if you're if you're if you're faced with a situation where you could do A or not A, think how will this resonate with my children? Will they think? Uh, better of me or lesser of me, and then act accordingly. Uh, so there's nothing that is more beautiful than when your own family, your wife and your kids, your young kids, uh, truly are filled with pride for what you do. So that's number one. The second point I wanted to make is uh, a point that I've made in the past, but I will you know, restate that, that, that theme in the context of another situation that happened in Florida. So so the first story comes from when I was in Naples, Florida. Uh, most More recently, I just came back from a family vacation in, uh, also on the west coast of Florida. And on one of the days, we had gone to 
uh, Sarasota to uh, first time ever actually we really loved the the area uh, by the way I in Sarasota I discovered this incredible bookstore and one of the people who was working at the bookstore told me of a secret room uh, where we were taken to that secret room where they have all these antiquarian books uh, I, I ended up buying this book which is not an anti it's not an antiquarian book but uh, it's a biography on Linus Pauling some of you may know that Linus Pauling remains, if I'm not mistaken, the only person to win two Nobel Prizes uh, solo. I think one for chemistry and one for uh, peace. And so I thought that in my vast collection of biographies, I should have Pauling's uh, biography. And so I look forward to eventually reading it. But in any case, uh, on the way back from Sarasota, you know, it was nighttime and we were driving back. It was about an hour and a half drive back to our hotel uh we got into this incredible conversation uh about where my children were asking me about you know the big bang and you know, what was there before the big bang and how could we ever know how could we ever answer such questions and so we got into you know i explained to them saint thomas aquinas and you know the first mover you know causal cause argument we uh, th brought in girdle and you know uh, incompleteness theorem and you know what are what are some problems that could never be solved i got into alan turing and some of his unbelievably uh, theoretical arguments for you know how do you classify uh, certain problems uh, in terms of how hard they are and whether they can be uh, solved or not this is this, this uh, harks back to my days in uh, pure mathematics and computer science theoretical computer science got into philosophy, got into methodology, astronomy. And it's one of those conversations where you really feel as a parent, you know, you're 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 doing something right because you know, today we have the TikTok generation and Instagram and kids have short attention spans and 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 my kids are no different from any other kids in that it's often very difficult to get them to you know, to pry the the electronics away from them, but that we were able, that I was able to uh, engage them and, and and trigger their intellectual curiosity uh, so that we could have such deep and meaningful conversations that gave me such a high. And I was uh, truly one of those magical moments that you have with your children. So the, the second tip I would say that I can offer you is don't infantilize your kids. I, I always hate when I see people speaking to their children in, in baby talk even when the, the child is a toddler oh gucci gucci i i detest that uh treat your children with dignity they are your children you are the parent you you're still the authority figure they're not your buddies but engage them right i speak to them i mean i you know i've gone on, on walks with my son as i explained in my forthcoming book where i'm explaining to him about libertarianism and at the time i think he was nine years old uh, so, you know, I try to structure the message in a way that they hopefully will find it interesting, but I don't infantilize them. I don't coddle them. I don't, uh, I treat them with the full dignity that their intellects, their developing intellects deserve. So that's point two. Point three is one that has not only happened in Florida in this last trip, but it's, it's, it's one where my daughter said something on the trip. So we had gone one day to uh, St. Petersburg. We went into an art gallery, and the the lady who was mending the, the the art gallery, we got into a conversation with her. This, this amazing conversation. At one point, she noticed that I liked a particular artist, and then she said, "Oh, he just drew a a, a piece, uh, Stairway to Heaven, from Led Zeppelin." Then I said to her, "Oh my God, I just introduced Led Zeppelin to my daughter, and uh, she now loves the song All My Love, which was." you know, a song that I really loved when I was, when it first came out in the 70s. And so my daughter had gotten into uh, Led Zeppelin. And so the the art uh, person was excited. She gave me, you know, she sent me an email after and so on. So, but the, the interaction at that moment was so genuine, so authentic. And then in, in Sarasota, we had a similar interaction with another gentleman at another art gallery where we, where we got into this wonderful conversation about art and you know how much does the art gallery have to sell per month in order to break even and we, we got into all kinds of really fun conversations and as we left my daughter looked at me and said daddy we need to go away on a 
trip with you at least once a month because these all these conversations you have with people it's, it's just amazing or something to that effect and that was a very touching moment for me because it it I could see that my children were now of an age where they were appreciating uh, these interactions that I was having, these little moments of magic that I was having with all sorts of people. Why? Because I'm an open person. Uh, I'm curious. I'm uh, contrary to what my, some some people might think based on some of my, you know, uh, self-aggrandizing humor on social media. I'm a very down-to-earth person. Uh, and and I just open myself up to all kinds of interactions. I think that's one of the reasons why The Sad Truth has been a popular show because people come on my show and, uh, you know, it's very it's a very warm and inviting environment and right away they feel comfortable and we have these really great, uh, intense and uh, intimate conversations. But that translates into how I live my life in the, in the world outside of The Sad Truth, right? And so to, to summarize... The first story is about, you know, always hopefully living your life in a way that makes your children proud of you, right? Because we we often hear about, you know, uh, you know, uh, children should make their parents proud. I mean, yeah, that's true. But parents should also make their children proud of them, right? It's it's, it's not a one way street. It's not a parasitic relationship. Uh, it's it's a two way. All healthy relationships are reciprocal. So yes, children should make their parents proud, but certainly the other way around. The second story I told you about is engage the intellect of your children in meaningful ways. I mean, my son now sits down and we have conversations about, you know, the 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 Kevin McCarthy thing that now he's become house speaker after many attempts, many votes. Uh, he's 11 years old and, you know, he can have a conversation with you about that. But that didn't come out of magic. It's because I, I didn't infantilize him. I, I recognize that he's got a curious, uh, developing intellectual brain and he just needs for me to water it, for it to flourish. And so that's story number two. And story number three is, you know, be open to, to life. And that's something that I discuss uh, quite extensively in my forthcoming book. Uh, which I, I will release a separate sad truth uh, about it because you could now pre-order it. It's called The Sad Truth About Happiness, Eight Secrets for Living the Good Life. Uh, in any case, uh, by being open to the world, you, you really truly do attract these wonderful, serendipitous, magic moments with people rather than being closed off. And... Uh, and, and, and I think my children are now seeing the, uh, the, the benefits that come from uh, having those social skills because it, it opens you up to all kinds of situations that are truly uh, the, the stuff that makes the, the rich tapestry of, of, our, of our lives. So there you have it, folks. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, uh, life lessons clip. Uh, I always feel uh, a bit tepid in offering these life lessons because it seems so presumptuous that you know here are some lessons but then again that's one of the reasons why i decided to write uh, my forthcoming book because i i saw the the the, the positive reaction and reception that i would get whenever i would offer advice and i thought okay well let me let me take a crack at writing such a book and so hopefully when the book comes out i think in july uh you'll get it and you'll enjoy it it's filled with tons of uh, personal anecdotes uh, on how to live the good life, how to be happy, but also backed up by some, you know, really cutting edge science. So there you have it. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.